Grey Zone say that they have a leaked document exposing PSYOPs or something, right? And the document itself is un inherently unverifiable whether it's actually real or not. Like, this is the least vettable document ever, right? There is literally nothing here to indicate that it's real. It's like a default f***ing Microsoft Word template. It's not digitally signed, like there's nothing about this to prove that it's real for one. It's not even an actual government document, it's from a, a PR firm contracted by the government, at least according to the Grey Zone. Well, let's assume that it's real anyway. But it doesn't really sound that outlandish. So, when you actually look at the context of this, right, like it's like from February 20, 2021 or whatever, claiming that they were going to like make some, like a P, basically a PR firm contracted by the government or something, the UK government. And the relevant part of this document is that they said that they would contract like um, Abigail Thorne, aka Philosophy Tube, to be like, I guess like the public face of this campaign. And this is from February 20, 2021. So it seems incredibly unlikely that they actually went through with this because it's been like 10 months now. And the goal of the campaign was basically to counter COVID misinformation like anti-vaxxers, anti-lockdown people and such. So what we have here is essentially a guilt by association, at least according to Grey Zone. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to look into it further, but I, I at least trust them to say, you know, this this business has probably been involved with um, government contracts to like delegitimize Assad or something. That's, you know, that's realistic. Let's say that's true. This business has been contracted by the UK government to attack Assad or something before. Okay, if, even if we assume this is true, that's not what she was being contracted for. Partners collaborating on this project. If she collaborated on the project, where's the fucking evidence of it? Like, what did she do for this project? Like, let's see what, what the actual outline of it is. Most of it is just like internal data gathering, studies, blah, blah. Video release and associated publicity from 14th week and onward. Has she released any video that could possibly be related to this. By the way, it's it's weird because I guarantee you that most of her audience is from the US. So the UK government obviously would be contracting a PR firm with the goal of that PR firm reaching the UK demographic specifically, not just to release a video on her channel generally, right? So I would say this probably doesn't really have much to do with her YouTube channel. Like a mass social media campaign, if you've seen anything about that on her Twitter, let me know. She hasn't released anything possibly. I mean, aside from her video on like, should we trust the experts or whatever, which didn't really get that many views and it was quite a while ago. Yeah, that was that was a year ago. That, that was before this project was even a, supposedly a thing, if it's even real. It's also very weird. Like, as I said earlier, right, it's a PR firm contracted by the government to essentially run a public health awareness campaign, okay? That's not the same thing as the government, like, contracting the same PR firm to run, like, an anti-Assad imperialist campaign or whatever, right? So they're basically trying to imply guilt by association here. She's involved in essentially a social media campaign run by a PR firm on behalf of the government to essentially attack anti-vaxxers and anti-lockdown people, which is hardly a bad thing. Like you could say, maybe you should have done more research into who she was working with, but the fact of the matter is that Philosophy Tube doesn't talk about this sort of thing. If anything, she like leans slightly anti-imperialist, I guess, just from like osmosis from her videos, but she doesn't talk about that sort of thing. So to say that she's like someone who would like attack Assad or whatever, to be pro-imperialism or whatever, doesn't really hold any water, but her videos are all fairly abstract. None of them, from what I know, have even remotely kind of addressed imperialism in any real direct way. If anything, I would say that most of her videos presents things in a way that would be very inconvenient for the government that supposedly she's working on behalf of, according to these people. Uh, very worse, what we have here is Philosophy Tube should have looked into if this is even real, by the way, because nothing has come of this at all yet. It's from February, it's been 10 months. Where's this campaign? Where's the result of it? There's literally nothing. So if this is even real, which is debatable, at best you can say that she should have looked into who she was working with. Still, what she's what she's apparently doing here, if it's even real, is not remotely bad. It's a, it's a fucking public health care, like a public health awareness campaign on behalf of the government. The only reason that it seems nefarious because it's run by a PR firm, the, gov the UK government apparently likes to contract for various things, including attacking the Syrian government. Like if she had been say directly contracted by like the the health ministry or something to do this these people wouldn't be talking about it at all that wouldn't seem weird at all that that it's like guilt by association right like this this pr firm has worked on other things for the uk government and therefore apparently abigail fawn is linked to those other things 
she's pro-imperialist. It doesn't make any sense. This also has nothing to do with like intelligence agencies or anything. Now the reason why the Grey Zone is trying to play this up is for one, because they're very into these sort of conspiracy theories where like, it's impossible for just like liberals to have bad opinions. Liberals can only have bad opinions as a result of like a massive conspiracy tied to intelligence agencies or whatever. And the thing is, Philosophy Dude isn't even a liberal with bad opinions. Nothing that she said on her channel or on is really objectionable. I don't think these people would disagree with it at all. So it's just they're reaching totally. And it's like, so because she, according to them, according to this document that is completely unverifiable and looks like anyone could have made it in Microsoft Word, I could have made it to Microsoft Word in like five hours, like from concept to finish. The thing about this is they take her, someone who at worst makes videos that would be found inconvenient for them by most governments. They take that and use it as like some sort of like extrapolation. Like they, they basically extrapolate it, try and say that Abigail Thorne is part of a vast conspiracy involving all everyone who can be considered a bread tuber. So like lumping her in with actual imperialists like Vosh to try and say that basically all of them are like psyops by the CIA or whatever. They're trying to literally compare like a uh, anti-Assad imperialist psyop to like a pro-vaccine, pro-lockdown government campaign in the UK. And the reason why they don't like that is because Max Blumenthal is an anti-vaxxer, anti-lockdown conspiracy theorist. He's basically a fucking QAnoner at this point, okay? That's why. And it really ties into other stuff with like, you know, the ridiculous bullshit that um, these people say that like basically because a bunch of bread tubers are either imperialists or mostly silent on imperialism, that means that they are um, a psyop, like... Philosophy Tube, for example, there's literally nothing about her that you could, you could remotely say that she's an imperialist. There's nothing there. This is what I mean, right? You can read in the article. In this article, they try to link this to, like, um, Caleb Maupin. And it's like, in his book, socialist organizer Caleb Maupin likened Bread Tube to the counter gangs deployed by British and UK and US intelligence to infiltrate and dismantle insurgent forces. With no evidence, I might add. There is no evidence to what they're claiming here. So they're latching on to the smallest little thing. Completely unverifiable documents that look very fake, though that could be real, who knows. That even if we take them at face value, don't even remember remotely indicate the things that they're trying to extrapolate from them. Like, they quote Caleb Morpin saying that BreadTube is likely serving the American ruling elite and the intelligence agencies. Likely. Likely, right? Because there's no evidence, just likely. And they say here, the covert relationship between BreadTube's Abigail Thorne, Valen Projects, and the Royal Institute appears to validate Morpin's thesis. No, it really doesn't. It really just doesn't at all. Like, that's just a massive leap, right? There's, like, they don't actually have any evidence or any of that shit, so they have to just jump onto anything. There's nothing here. Like, the evidence that Morgan presented in his book was, like, Vosh has a rich dad from Beverly Hills. And now we have the second piece of evidence, finally, the smoking gun. Philosophy Tube was allegedly contracted by a PR firm to be, like, the public face of a pro-vaccination lockdown campaign on behalf of the UK government. I'm sorry, I just don't care. I really don't care about that. Morpin continued, BreadTube socialism is not really socialism. It's mobilizing young liberals to keep dissident elements in line. Yeah, that's true. However, I mean, Max Blumenthal isn't a socialist either, so I don't know why he would care. I don't know why he would quote that. And now it's like the national security establishment's favorite socialist. Artisanal audio and visual effects. So they like describe Philosophy Tube's YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. And then they, ex they say like, they describe BreadTube saying, BreadTube advances a hyper-identitarian, I don't think they know what identitarian means, imperialism-friendly interpretation of socialist politics. Again, I want to know how her videos are imperialist-friendly. And they, like, start talking about Vorsch. Like, yeah, they don't actually cite any evidence. They basically take, like, um, that this one doc unverifiable document that they claim is true and extrapolate from that to, to be like, so we're going to list, like, everyone from Kayla Morpin's book, who Kayla Morpin said were bad, and extrapolate from that to say that all of these people are CIA agents. It's obviously absurd. And they, they talk about Sean, too. Oh, they, they attack Sean for, um, and what's the evidence against Sean? Okay, so Sean attacked Jimmy Dore for being an anti-vax COVID denialist piece of shit. And the evidence that Sean is a psyop is that his video has apparently benefited from an algorithmic boost. So if you actually look at the evidence here, like this entire article is a nothing. It's nothing. I don't know how, there's probably like some logical fallacy to describe this. It's nothing. There's no evidence. Like they, they get this one thing, like isn't 
isn't nearly as significant as what they claim it is, and possibly isn't even real. And they use that to claim that one, Philosophy Tube is is like an intelligence agency imperialist or whatever. So they like extrapolate from that to say like, so all of these other people who this this has absolutely nothing to do with in any real way, all of these other people, they are also intelligence agents. And what is our evidence for this? Well, actually nothing, but we here's a quote from Caleb Morpin who says, all the key signs of infiltration are there. Since when does US mainstream media highlight the work of Marxist revolutionaries? I mean, no one thinks that these people are Marxist revolutionaries, not even they do. It's just like, hey guys, there's no evidence here, but the signs are there. Caleb Morpin says, I have had no doubt they were covertly supported by powerful entities. Man, having no doubt when you have literally nothing to go off is, um, very interesting. That is amazing. There's nothing here. Like, this is what I mean with the gray zone, right? I've said this before. What they always do is they take, like, a relatively small piece of evidence and they extrapolate from that to form a, a vast conspiracy. And whenever it's correct, which is sometimes because, you know, it's not exactly hard to be correct when you like say, hey, maybe the, U the USA is involved in something in some country that they don't like or whatever. It's always by like coincidence rather than because they actually had any evidence to form the conclusions that they're forming. Here's, an, here's the, another piece of their evidence. Philosophy Tube attacked Jordan Peterson in a video which was openly sponsored by Curiosity Stream. And they're like, it's, it's, it's a paid promotion. Wow, isn't that so nefarious? And they say, yet no such disclaimer referring to support from the royal institution can be found on any of her other uploads. And that may be because the covert campaign was intended to be covert. It may be because there's literally no fucking video on her channel which even remotely fits with what these people are saying. There's nothing here that even remotely aligns with the supposed campaign that these people are saying that she wanted to, that she was participating in. There's nothing here. There's nothing about COVID. Literally nothing. Not even remotely related. Nor imperialism or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so here we go, um, essentially, like, Max Bubenfell is a massive anti-vaxxer. I don't know how he became an anti-vaxxer, because everyone else in the Grey Zone seems to be pro-vax, except him. But he's also the editor-in-chief of the Grey Zone, so he gets to publish whatever he wants. I wonder if, um, Ben Norton is signal-boosting this, because I know that Ben Norton is pro-vax. There's two chances. Ben Norton is either just silent and pretending this isn't happening, or he's, he's signal-boosting it, and he's just dropped, like, any semblance of, um, being tied to reality anymore. Ben Norton is literally here attacking anti-vax misinformation 10 hours ago. He's still attacking anti-vaxxers. As of 10 hours ago, he's, he's debunking right-wing lies about vaccines, while his partner is doing the exact fucking opposite. Yeah, he, he's, he's quiet on this. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing. This is weird. It's very weird. Yep, he's, he's um, praising Cuba for their vaccination campaign. This is very weird. Like, there's a split in the gray zone. If you call yourself a tanky and you're not pro-vaccine mandate, you're not a fucking tanky. You want to be a tanky? Here's what you should be. Anyone who's not vac vaccinated goes straight to the fucking gulag until they get vaccinated. That's what a real tanky would say. Get the fuck out of here, you fucking liberal. At least be a good tanky. Yeah, you want to not be vaccinated? Great, you can be free to play cards with your buddies in the fucking gulag. Until you die of hunger. What if, what if someone called it fucking tanky talking about government overreach? What the fuck is wrong with you? You have tanky on your username. Yeah, this is all just anti-vax shit. Anti-lockdown shit. Feels like he supports the Holocaust. The anti-lockdown shit is especially weird because Grey Zone people were like, you know, praising China for how they tackled COVID with massive fucking lockdowns the best lockdowns in the entire world actually aside from maybe vietnam most effective that really dealt with the violence because they didn't take any half measures they didn't take any chance they just went all out right away and they worked but somehow when western countries try to do the same it's like a, a secret campaign by the cia and also bread tube or something okay so apparently the people who are involved in writing these documents have even stated that they believe that they have been doctored. So there's no confirmation of their of their authenticity from the people who made them. So the only thing that we have to go on here is the word of the gray zone. And aside from that, there's literally there's no there's no evidence whatsoever that um, Philosophy Tube has been involved in anything. There's nothing on her YouTube that aligns with this at all. Nothing on her Twitter that aligns with this at all. Nothing anywhere that aligns with this supposed campaign and even if it was a real campaign working on behalf of a pr firm to run a social media campaign that promotes vaccines and um covid measures in order so that people don't die is not bad at the very worst as i said earlier you could say that she should have looked into who she was working with more before accepting it because if the if as the gray zone says 
this firm has been involved in um, pro-imperialism psyops before then. Obviously she shouldn't have worked with them. Well, Abigail Thorne was a guest of honor at an event promoting the incredibly effective and safe vaccines that everyone should take. Wow. That's so nefarious, that's so nefarious, man. I can't believe that she would do that. This is so nefarious. Like, the Grey Zone is a fucking joke. Anyone who, who, like, reads this shit, like, there's still nothing. There's no evidence. There's nothing. It's just, she, like, attended a, like, an online conference where she said that vaccines are good. Okay, good for her. I'm glad she did that. It's like trying to prove a conspiracy about something that's not even nefarious in the first place. Like, the only way this can look like a cons conspiracy is if you're a fucking anti-vax, COVID denialist nutter. It's like trying to say that the government is, the government is like running a fucking conspiracy to give people welfare or something. It's that fucking stupid. The government is running a conspiracy to give disabled people a pension! News at 11 about how a PR firm is trying to tell disabled people to apply for the pension that they're entitled to. It's that same sort of thing. It's fucking stupid. It just goes on and on. It just keeps going on and on and there's nothing. There's nothing. There's no evidence. Like, as I said, from one little thing that isn't even remotely as significant as they claim it is, they extrapolate and just like list, like it's a, just a barrage of tangentially related things, like an endless barrage of guilt by association. This is absurd. It just goes on and on and on. It is simply inconceivable that similar operations have not been enacted elsewhere in the world. Governments around the world are definitely promoting vaccines. You don't, I don't need the Grey Zone to tell me that. And it's good that they do that. They should do more of it. There's nothing here. To just, like, take one little thing that is basically nothing, not even remotely nefarious as they're trying to claim it is, and they just, like, lean into, like, a massive guilt by association fallacy firstly on Abigail Thorne. And then they try to say that because she's, like, in, like, the same, like, neat... In uh, kind of niche YouTube genre that some other people are also in. Those other people, they're also part of this conspiracy too or something. And then it goes on into like talking about a bunch of other shit that is even less tra tangentially related. Like this is not, this is awful. This is terrible. As someone who puts a lot of care into crafting what I write and trying to make sure every little bit of it is very, so clearly linked to like the last one that I talked about or something I talked about earlier through very clear and obvious evidence. Like this is nothing. This is awful. This is how the grey zone operates. This is why you shouldn't read them. It's nothing. It's awful. It's terrible. It's, it's a complete fucking joke. And the entire thing, like, relies on this equation of, um, UK imperialism with the UK wanting people to get vaccinated within the UK and, like, wanting them to obey COVID measures so that they don't fucking infect people and die. It's just fucking stupid. The grey zone's dumb. I've had enough of that. You, I've said everything there is to say about it.